This is a short video just explaining comparative pie charts and this is for the GCSE statistics course. What are comparative pie charts? So comparative pie charts are used to show two or more sets of data and it's usually done when the two sets of data are different sizes. To do this accurately, you have to make sure that the area of the circle is in the same proportion as the totals displayed. So if the total of set B is twice as large as the total for set A, then the pie chart should be twice as large. They not only show the difference in proportions, but the difference in their totals being represented. The larger the area of the circle, the more people it represents. Here we have two pie charts which are taken from the My Maths example. We have teachers and travel agents and where they went on holiday. All we can see from this pie chart is the proportion of teachers and the proportion of travel agents. I can see that half of teachers went to Europe, shown by this 180 degrees um, half a pie chart here. And I can see just over a quarter of travel agents went to Europe, shown on the 99 degrees on this pie chart here. As I don't know how many teachers and how many travel agents, I can only answer that a larger proportion of teachers went to Europe. However, if we turn these into comparative pie charts, where the travel agent's pie chart becomes smaller, I can see that there are less travel agents altogether. And therefore, I can make better comparisons about the totals. I can't do everything because I still don't know figures but I can say for definite that if I have a larger proportion for teachers, like I do for Europe, because I know there's more teachers altogether, I can definitely say that there were more teachers that went to Europe. And that's what this point says here. Now we have comparative pie charts. We can see that not only does a higher proportion of teachers travel to Europe and travel agents, but also a higher total, as there were more teachers altogether represented in the pie chart. So, those of you that are pushing for um, above a grade 7 really need to be able to work out the area and radius of a comparative pie chart or at least explain the process that needs to be done. So, we're going to have a look at a couple of examples. The first example is about two colleges. A college has a thousand pupils and the other college has two thousand pupils. The student wants to draw a comparative pie charts to represent the number of students and he draws a pie chart for the first college with a diameter of 10 centimetres. Calculate the radius for the second pie chart. So as we've already said, it's all about the area of the pie chart increasing. I need to know how much to increase the area by and then be able to work out what the radius should be. So we can take this in small steps. Step one, what is the radius of the pie chart he's already drawn? If I read through the information, they've told me that um, the first pie chart has a diameter of 10 centimetres. So hopefully we can remember that diameter is two lots of the radius. So the radius of the first college pie chart is 5 centimetres. So I can work out the area of the first pie chart. Area is pi r squared. I'm going to use 3.14 for pi just for simplicity here. And if my radius is 5 centimetres, it's going to be 3.14 times 25 which is 78.5 centimetres squared. So now I need to know how much bigger or smaller to make my pie chart. The first college has 1,000 pupils and the other college has 2,000 pupils. So to work out my proportion, how much bigger or smaller, I could see that it is increased by 1,000 pupils. So it's 2,000 over 1,000, it's doubled in size. It's two times bigger. So I'm going to work out the area of the new pie chart. So I'm going to double my area at 78.5 and that gives me 157 centimetres squared. So that's how big my pie chart for the second college needs to be. I can then work out the radius using a bit of algebra. We know that area is pi r squared and we know that the area equaled 157 centimetres squared. So I can say 157 area equals pi, 3.14, times r squared. Solving that equation for r, I divide by 3.14 and then I square root the answer. I can find that r is 7.04 centimetres. Notice how I haven't just doubled the radius. I've doubled the area and then worked out the radius.
If we have a look at a second example, just to make sure you understand this, and we'll look at what happens when we need a smaller radius and area. In 2000, a thousand people chose Fun Package Tours. In 2001, their reputation grew and 20% more people chose them as their tour operator. Fun Package Tours would like to show this data in their brochure using pie charts. They choose a radius of 3 cm for their 2000 pie chart. I do apologise, this is an increase as well. What radius should they use for their 2001 pie chart? So I'm going to follow the same steps and see if I can get the answer. So the first thing I had to do was find out what the radius of the first pie chart was. Quite conveniently they've told us I don't have to double or half anything, it's 3 cm. Now I know the radius of the pie chart, I can work out its area. So area is pi r squared. Again, I'm using 3.14 for convenience. So my area is 3.14 times 9, which is 28.26 centimetres squared. Now I need to know how much bigger or smaller my pie chart needs to be. So it tells me in this question that it grew by 20% more. That means it's going to increase by 20%, so I'm going to need to times it by 1.2. An increase of 20% is a multiplier of 1.2. So the area of my new pie chart is the 28.26 times 1.2, which is 33.912 centimetres squared. Now I know my area, I can work backwards and I can get the radius. So if area is pi r squared, my area of 33.912 equals 3.14 times r squared. And again, solving that equation, I divide by 3.14 and then I square root that answer to tell me that r is 3.29.